This film is brought to you by New York Life and its over 11,000 agents and representatives who offer you quality financial products and services to help you get the most out of life. On November 13th, 1988, Wayne Fonce was named interim head coach of the Detroit Lions. A week later, he won his first game. And it's all over. The Lions have beaten the Green Bay Packers 19 to 9, making a winner of Wayne Fonts in his first game. As it was an emotional moment for an emotional man. Then on December 22nd, Fonts was officially named head coach, an appointment well deserved and a long time coming. The entire team got together for the first time at a mini camp in April. It was the initial opportunity for Fonts and his staff to build the spirit that breeds a winner. Fonts' skills as a communicator and a motivator had long been evident to all Lions players. And in fact, it was the players who first called for his promotion. We debated on does he have the qualification to become a head coach, and that was discussed in a team meeting with just the players. We felt that he, he did have the potential to be head coach. We got together, we wrote a letter and sent it to the head office. And next thing we know, Wayne was head coach. It was just it was something that, uh, you know, it doesn't, doesn't happen all the time for a team to say, this is the guy we want. And uh, uh, they have a great confidence in me. They believe in me. Uh, when I took over as interim coach, I changed a lot of things. A lot of things I changed was a lot of discipline. And I believe they wanted that. And I believe they feel with me at the, as the head coach, we could turn this thing around. And, and, and that's, a great, that's a great plus for me knowing that this team cares about me, and I think that's, that's, that's number one. If they care, I got a chance. Wayne Fonz, along with general manager Russ Thomas, share the belief that this team's greatest success lies in the immediate future. My job is to get the players to believe in us and to restore the roar back in the dome. I want to sell the people in Michigan in the Detroit area, that the Detroit Lions are for real. I want them back. We need the people back. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to get them back. I want to restore the roar. Before joining the Lions, Wayne Fonts was both defensive coordinator and assistant head coach in Tampa Bay. In just three seasons, the Bucks went from 0-16 to division champions. And despite his gregarious nature, Fonts has a tough side seldom seen by outsiders. And I'll tell you what, it was the worst day that I have ever had on a football field. As far as your intensity, as far as your desire, as far as your knowledge, and as far as caring what you do. If you don't give 100% out here, you're going to be gone. You will be gone. You will cut yourself. Okay. Fonts joined the Lions in 1985 as defensive coordinator and installed an aggressive 3-4 alignment that reflected his personality. Okay. They can't block me, bring everybody. I can get them, man. Keep it going. Keep boys. Relax, have a good time, all right? So when Wayne Fonts went looking for assistance, he chose men with the same toughness and commitment. Men like defensive coordinator Woody Weidenhofer. It was hard to get him, and it was a hard decision for him to make it. A lot of people wanted him, and when I got him, I felt I was on my way to having a great staff right away, because that, that, gave, that gave Wayne Fonts credibility. And on the Lions roster, Weidenhofer sees a solid foundation of dedicated defenders. My kind of guys. I like our players. I really do. And I really think that we have an opportunity right here to get it done. To say the least, Woody Weidenhofer got it done in Pittsburgh, where he developed the talents of all-time all-pros Jack Ham and Jack Lambert. As defensive coordinator of the four-time Super Bowl champions, he enhanced the strength of the Steel Curtain, arguably the greatest defensive unit in the history of the game. The Steel Curtain created a lasting image, 
and Weidenhofer sees a certain resemblance in at least two of his current players. Right now, Spillman reminds me an awful lot of Jack Lambert, and Mike Koffer reminds me a lot of Jack Ham, but a bigger, stronger kind of guy. Mike Koffer covers all of the field, but has played in virtual anonymity until last season, when he was selected by his peers as a starting outside linebacker in the Pro Bowl. In 1988, number 55 rang up a career-high 12 sacks, became the unquestioned leader of an improving Lions defense, and was named the team's defensive MVP. The league's best running backs also got to know a new face on the Lions defense, and their introduction was hardly a pleasant one. Detroit's second pick in last year's college draft, Chris Spielman, number 54, made a great first impression when he set a team record for tackles and was honored as the NFC's Defensive Rookie of the Year. In his second season in Detroit, Spielman senses a positive difference in this year's Lions. Everybody's just kind of feeling each other out right now, but everybody's enthusiastic and, and excited and getting ready to get going. And, and uh, if we work hard and things go right, we're going to be a winning football team. Other major contributors at linebacker include third-year man Dennis Gibson, number 98. Gibson ranked right behind Spielman in total tackles after leading the Lions in that category as a rookie. In only his second year, Danny Lockett, number 50, made an impact from both inside and outside linebacker and is a vital member of the special teams, as is George Jamison, number 58. Jamison posted career numbers in sacks, tackles, and interceptions and was named the Lions MVP on special teams. Vikings in Lion territory again. Here's Wilson back to throw the pass, tipped in the air, and grabbed off by the Lions, Jamison. And he is going to go all the way for a touchdown. Unbelievable. George Jamison <laughs> blocked the pass and then picked it out of the air and went 50 yards to put the Lions on the board again. And how do you like that? All of these men make up a healthy list of material for linebackers coach Herb Patera, who in 14 years has coached in three professional leagues. And defensive line coach Dick Mojaleski begins his second year in Detroit with 21 years of pro coaching experience. The personnel available up front will allow the Lions to continue to work out of the 3-4 alignment. The man who holds down the middle is 296-pound nose tackle Jerry Ball. A former all-rookie selection, Ball started all 16 games in 1988. Extremely active for a man his size, Ball was capable of not only taking on two or three blockers at a time, but also putting some heavy heat on quarterbacks as well. Eric Williams, number 76, has shown steady progress at defensive end. Williams equaled his personal best in sacks and is a positive force against the run. Joining Williams in passing situations is veteran Curtis Green, number 62. But the backbone of this improving unit is Keith Ferguson, number 77. The Lions' active leader in career sacks, Ferguson added eight and a half more in 1988. This season, he'll be joined by free agent Steve Hamilton, acquired from the Redskins. Both men will be looked to for strength in the trenches as the Lions face the changes and challenges of 1989. You're taking your whole body to get the After 10 years at the professional level, Frank Gans is recognized as the premier special teams coach in the NFL. Through motivation and a relentless demand for perfection, Gantz's units become conditioned to think big play every time out. We're out there to make plays that win. We are playing to 
win. We're playing to win. Right now. You honestly don't know when the big plays are going to occur. But the main thing is there's a deep-seated belief of all those 11 men that go on the field that the 10 other guys are going to play to their highest possible level, and you as an individual are going to play to your highest level. Oh, the things that on, we've man. been working on from day one in training camp, on. every damn day. Ready? Ready. Right. With the Kansas City Chiefs in 1986, Gantz put together one of the most remarkable special team seasons in NFL history an explosive unit that blocked or deflected 10 kicks and scored five touchdowns. Special teams is unique in the fact that we're not out there for 12 play drives or 10 play drives. You're out there for one specific purpose and you must get it done in a flash. In a season ending performance at Pittsburgh, Gantz's special team scored all 24 points in the win that vaulted the Chiefs into the playoffs for the first time in 15 years. In Detroit, the kicking game is already in good hands. In 1988, Eddie Murray tied the NFL record for accuracy by hitting 20 of 21 three-pointers, over 95%, and added to his career marks and field goals and points after. And for the second straight season, the NFC's premier punter, Jim Arnold, earned another trip to the Pro Bowl. It will be Frank Gantz's responsibility to ensure that the rest of the special team members measure up to the level of the kickers as blockers, tacklers, and returners. Hangs it high, Matthews back, back, grabs it on his own eight, looks upfield, sees Carl Bland, sees Butcher, is hit, fumbles the ball, scooped up by Jameson, touchdown! Oh, beautiful! To enhance the aggression and intensity of this unit, the Lions have procured the services of two of the NFL's best return men, Mel Gray and Bobby Joe Edmonds. Edmonds comes to the Lions from Seattle, where he was named the NFL Special Teams Player of the Year in 1986, and added his name to a half a dozen different All-Pro teams. He led the AFC in punt return average for two straight seasons, and his 75-yard return against the Eagles is a Seattle team record. The other acquisition, Mel Gray, last showcased his skills in New Orleans. In his first season there, he dazzled the 49ers with a team record 101-yard return. And those guys are without question going to contribute to the program here and help us win. But it takes 11 men, and it's really teamwork out there, and it's got to be a group of men working together because those other 10 men have got to block, and they have to block through and finish the play. And if that can happen, and we work really well together as a team under pressure, I think there could be some dramatic results. If they write, they write. Dramatic results are also expected from the defensive secondary. Well, that's, that's a good alert. Yeah. Go ahead and use it. Yeah, For 10 years, Billy Matthews has coached on both sides of the ball and now lends his expertise to the defensive backfield. This is a unit that made great strides in 1988 one that mixes both youth and experience, and one with depth in the form of William White and safety James Griffin, number 34, and Raphael Cherry, number 45. The most significant addition to the Lions secondary was first round draft pick Benny Blades, number 36. Blades brought a linebacker's mentality to the strong safety position. And his hits frequently caused a chain reaction that produced a turnover. The hitting became contagious. And the beneficiaries included cornerbacks Bruce McNaughton, number 29, and Jerry Holmes, number 43. People helping people. 
Lions helping Lions to win. Right out of the shotgun to throw a crossing route. The ball is knocked loose and Mitchell picks it off, going the other way. After a full year on injured reserve, safety Devon Mitchell got hitting help from James Griffin and recorded a career-long 90-yard interception return. Mitchell, Blades, McNaughton, and company all will be on hand in 1989 to restore the roar and put a winner back in the Silverdome. And uh, it's about a five-yard bubble. All-time Lions uh, great Charlie well, Sanders has joined the coaching staff, along with staff assistants Mike Murphy, Don Clemens, and strength and conditioning coordinator Skip Allen. What we want to get and Jerry Wumfler comes on board with 16 years of pro coaching experience to direct the fortunes of an offensive line that contains two of the NFL's top tackles, Lomas Brown and Harvey Salem. Go! Go! Kevin Glover, Steve Mott, and Joe Malinchek will also compete to retain their starting positions across the front line. Quarterback and receivers coach June Jones arrives from Houston, where he developed Warren Moon into one of the top QBs in the NFL. His assignments in Detroit, Chuck Long, Rusty Hilger, Eric Hipple, and draft pick Rodney Pete, the 1988 Heisman Trophy runner-up. All offensive coaches will add their skills to a dramatic new system created by offensive wizard Mouse Davis. Once known as the run and shoot, it has become the silver stretch, and its philosophy is simple. Try to use a hope feel. The concept is that we're going to stretch you vertically, we're going to stretch you horizontally, and uh, take all the holes and gaps. We line up four wideouts in a balanced formation. Now we start the inside slot in motion across the formation. And as he goes, he, the quarterback, and the other receivers read the coverage. Then, depending upon that coverage, we may fly it over the top, we may fade it, we may drive it up the seam, we may break it back underneath, always off what happens with the coverage. One who sees the silver stretch's vast potential is the man who was offensive coordinator in San Diego when the Chargers set the standard for the modern passing game. It's a, just a quantum leap in route adjustment. We have a plan, but we change the plan on the snap of the ball based on what the defense does, which is traditionally what defenses have done. So we're trying to do a little role reversal or at least get even with them. And I think it's an exciting change and it's, it's fun to work with. There are three qualities that Miles Davis looks for in a receiver and one stands out above all. In what we do, speed is of the essence. We get good vertical stretch with speed. It opens up the creases and the holes and the coverage. And once you get speed, then you got to sort through the speed and make sure you also have intelligence and the ability to catch the ball. Can't catch the ball, can't play. Can't think, can't play. If you're really fast, we're going to be slow to give up on can't think. And we are going to rep them and rep them and give them an opportunity to succeed. Pete Mandley, the Lions receiving leader of 1988, will head up the competition for the four starting wide receiver spots. A long ball threat for six years is number 89, Jeff Chadwick, whose smarts and savvy have made him the Lions' leading active receiver. The Lions' leader in receiving two years running, Pete Manley, established new marks in punt returns and return yardage as well. Long fakes to James, drops to throw, wants to go left, now down the middle in the end zone, touchdown, Pete Manley! Mandley's varied skills will serve him well as the silver stretch begins expanding the horizons of a football field. Indeed, the point-scoring potential of Mouse Davis's offense has caught the attention of every Lion. I feel it's a great opportunity for not just myself, but the four wide receivers uh, combined to be very, very productive. Um, I couldn't ask for anything more. It's all about people getting the job done. And I felt like him coming in here would give me a chance to show what I can do with a winning team, not just a team that's going 4 and 11. Part of the Silver Stretch philosophy is pass first, run second. As the pass offense stretches the field, it will open up the running lanes, and Gary James will be free to use his strength and power to complement the air attack.
James' pass catching skills will be fully utilized. And the same applies to James Jones, who has forged a reputation as one of the finest pass catching fullbacks in the NFL. Hilger rolling right, now back to his left. He's going deep, Gary James open inside the 15. He's going in for a Detroit touchdown. Catching the ball long and short and running inside and out, Gary James' full potential should be realized in 1989. I see the potential for this offense to score a lot of points. For the past few years, we didn't have that potential. I mean, it just wasn't really in our game plan. We were more of a, just control the ball and play, really to stay in the game rather than go out and play to win. And uh, everything I've heard and everything that I've seen so far, what we're putting in is to score points and win some games. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like at this time to introduce to you uh, one of the finest running backs in the United States of America and our number one pick, Barry Sanders. In one glorious season, Barry Sanders proved himself to be the greatest collegiate runner in the history of American football. His 2,670 yards rushing and 39 touchdowns established nearly unbreakable records and earned him the Heisman Trophy. It's really good to be here in Detroit. I really feel, feel good and I feel it's a privilege to be one of the players that will, will help restore the roar in the dome. Number 21 at Oklahoma State, Barry Sanders will wear a new number in Detroit one with very special meaning to Lions fans. For five seasons, the number 20 was worn by the greatest runner in team history, Billy Sims. Until a knee injury forced him from the game, Sims provided Detroit with an excitement not seen or felt since. The similarities between Sims and Barry Sanders are striking. They are both Heisman Trophy winners. They both played college ball in the state of Oklahoma, and their running styles reflect many of the same electric qualities. Like Billy Sims, Barry Sanders is a natural runner with the drive, desire, and commitment to help the Lions restore the roar. The 1989 Detroit Lions possess all the dynamics of a winner, and they all see a world of difference between this year and last. The difference this year is there's more enthusiasm in this minicamp than it was last minicamp. I mean, guys were running around like, you know, hey, we think we can win. This year, we're running around like, hey, we know we can win. The attitude's there. Everybody's positive. So we're going to go out and just prove it to people. Hey, every once in a while, a chance comes. And uh, I've got a chance. And it's so important to me. And, and I'm so excited about the opportunity I have. All I want to do is improve this football team. It's going to be a hard job. And, and I believe this. When we turn this around, it's not because of Wayne Fox. It's going to be because of my staff and my players. And that's the bottom line. Staff and players, and you can win games. While the design for a championship team will not be completed overnight, this fall's edition of the Lions should have a lasting appeal. This team is bound to its future, and their vision is pointed toward tomorrow as the Detroit Lions prepare to restore the roar. This video is part of a complete blockbuster lineup of NFL films capturing pro football's greatest plays and biggest heroes with crunches, follies, highlights, and Super Bowl hits, plus new releases each season.
We've got action-packed videos of every superstar team in the NFL. Call 1-800-NFL-TAPE now for a free catalog and order your NFL hit today. Or look for NFL films at your nearby video store. The season's never over with NFL Films and Fox Hills Video.